What happened? Mechanic? Wallace Car Shop. Yeah. But they don't own anymore, do they? Bring it in, guys. Bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Everybody, but we're also on tape. We are down in the bowels. Ah. <laughs> Episode 127 of Camelops the Last of Week. Christopher Foles, Magic Mike, and Bill. <laughs> this is it. Last one. Last episode. Mike, how do you feel? I uh, I think that I never thought we'd see episode four, so I think this is a pretty amazing. <laughs> it was a pretty good run. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, amazing. You know, like um, that. That's a lot. That's uh, two two and a half years or something like that. Uh, yeah. We've become pretty good friends, and and it's uh, covered a lot of things and had some really amazing uh, amazing times. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna look back at uh, all the great times we had. May twelfth, twenty twenty one, first show. Wow. To February seventh, twenty twenty four, Tombstone. Wow. The end. Yep. Thoughts? Initial? It was fun while it lasted. Fun while it lasted? Yep. Corporate Chris? Okay, yep. so we'll tell you right now why the show is going to end. We can't tell that story. I'm pissed at you, by the way. Mm-hmm. I can't believe this. So on the eve of our final show, in which we're going to <laughs> explain why yeah. this show can't happen, which has to do with the Phoenix not rising, you go and you give the story away to cast in it. The day before... We could have rolled it out today, had wow. it first, and they just... They were bothering me. Everyone was bothering me and wanted to know what's happening because they heard rumors, and I thought, fine, we know Tim, right? He's a good friend of ours. So I, he kept texting me, and I said, okay, I'll call you. You called me yesterday. So I was driving around town, getting things done, and, uh, and um, I parked the car and, and talked to him. It's, 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 it's not a big deal. We can talk about it right here. It's just, um, it's not like a, br- a breaking story. When, you know, we tried to start a newspaper. We came closer than we thought we would ever get. It went sideways. And that paper would have been tied to this show because we would have the paper as um, <clears throat> a business that we would co-own and we would um, have income from. And we keep doing the show like we did the show with KTW, right? It would be, and we try to grow both. But the paper didn't go forward for reasons, you know, various reasons. Well, let, let's deal with it though. So yeah. let's let's. De- I don't. We don't need to go into. No. Basically, we came to the paper. The canvas we closed in uh, last paper was October twenty fifth. And I was ready just to go and just take a break with my severance and just r- relax. I wasn't even interested in starting a new paper. Uh, other people at the, the paper, I think you, yourself, inc- I'm not even sure if you were there. There's other people who yeah, wanted to keep the paper going or start a new paper. I wasn't part of that first group. And then about a week or two later, there was a meeting. I came to that meeting. Well, I was in the meeting. That's, yeah. that's when you're talking about. Yeah, and I was in the meeting, but I wasn't spearheading at that time. Yeah. And I thought it was a long shot, but I said, well, let's just look into it. We didn't know what we were doing. We, we, we were getting advice from our former owner from, uh, from uh, Black Press to say, hey, you know, is this going to work? So um, basically, uh, uh, Randy Blair, president of Black Press, our former owner, called and, and offered his condolences when we closed and said that he knows the market, he knows the numbers, and he can't believe why the, paper's clo- the paper is viable up there. Um, so I started talking to him, saying, well, could we possibly start one? He was giving me some advice. He was looking, looking at uh, basic budgets. He was talking about how they could print it in Vernon. And basically, we're learning a lot about it. But we needed money. We needed at least three months' worth of operating funds, which would be about 600, 700 grand. That was the big hurdle. Um, surprisingly, uh, within a month, I secured $600,000 from four investors. And I was going to throw in money with my wife. So we had enough money, and the investors were on board. Very well known business people in town. They believed in it. They, I hooked them up with uh, Black Press president. They had many meetings. And I, we had a stake. I mean, we, I yeah. had a stake. Yeah, everyone had a stake in this thing. 
everything. Um, the, the business was incorporated. I have the documents in my car. It was a Herculean effort on your behalf. It well, needs to be. Everyone out there needs to know that well, we, you poured your heart. And so it wasn't just you, but there was no, a lot. Was, but you, you were spearheading. Two a lot and a half months of nonstop work. We didn't stop work, and we were busier after the paper closed than we were when the paper was open trying to start this newspaper and it was looking really good i had a news release drafted it was in mid mid january we we're going to put it out there new papers coming to town this is happening and then in about first week of january everything went sideways there was just a disagreement with compensation with a, with a group of employees 11th hour yeah it, it went sideways they you know what fair enough they they thought they needed more we thought as the investor group that what 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 was on in the budget was was enough to get them going. We we were all willing to take a little um, pay cuts to get the paper going, but <clears throat> fair enough. They, they they thought they wanted more. We couldn't come to an agreement, and um, we we and time was an, an issue. You couldn't just go and hire on on on. Um, inexperienced people you needed people off the ground and the three people we had in the sales department were among the best in the city and um, you know they, they, they felt they needed more we couldn't come to agreement fair enough um, the, and, and the, the time was again every week that went by you're losing more advertisers because they're already committing to other other media outlets in town so you know we wanted to get this paper up and running in mid-December then mid-January and we had February 8th Tomorrow would have been the first issue, well, if 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 we had <coughs> uh, finalized everything in in uh, January. I have a coffee. But so. we uh, <coughs> we couldn't do it, and and it just died on both January eighth. It all went sideways. <coughs> so uh, at that time, um, we had one last meeting. You were there. Jessica was there. Uh, the salespeople were there, and the lead investor was there. And it turns out that we just couldn't bridge that gap. Yeah, and so. I, I I thought because I had heard things had gone sideways, and I started calling people, and had a hand in organizing that last meeting where mm -hmm. I, you know, I thought hopefully we, things would get better and everyone would get on the same page and we could go forward and that meeting was actually like the kind of the death knell really yeah, yeah. the final the final one yeah the final nail so it was too bad and, and you know it was almost like though I was thinking it's like when you watch your favorite sports ball team Mike and they're um, <laughs> okay. and they're playing sometimes yeah. you'd rather them out of the gate, fall behind three nothing and lose ten to two in an important game because you know it's over at the beginning. It's much much more heartbreaking when your team's almost ready to win, and at the last minute they lose, and that's what yeah. this was like. So we, I mean, it was tough that way, but it is what it is. It could be a sign that it wasn't meant to be. You got a really good opportunity in the media. I got it. I got a job. I got. A, I'm moving forward. Everybody's moving forward. Just like when the Daily News closed ten years ago, uh, it was shocking. It was crushing. But everyone I know who works there is doing really well it, today. It was also, you and I had kind of hatched ideas or plans. The main one was going to be attach this show mm -hmm. with the newspaper. The new yep. newspaper run it kind of as an augmentation. Yep. We also talked about going in, uh, going it alone. Mm -hmm. Or and you and Wallace and I had a meeting about doing something online, yep. our own thing online, and yep. incorporating the show into that. Yep. And meanwhile, while you were, while you were kind of taking care of business for the newspaper, I was kind of keeping things going with the advertising for this in hopes that that would all come together. It takes yeah. a lot of time for me, probably like 15 to 20 hours a week to do this show. A lot show. of time, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is absolutely one of those moments. Um, and then um, you you were offered a job, mm -hmm. which is a great job. And I don't Well, I applied for the job and I went through the process yes. and I surprisingly got offered the job and I couldn't Can you say it what it is? Yeah, it's just this communications job with the Provincial Health Services Authority. Corporate Chris. Not a corporate Chris, no. <laughs> it's corporate Chris. I'm working, no. I'm working for, for people. No, 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 I'm no. no. You are, I know you are. I'm just, I'm bugging you. I'm working for the people, yeah, not I know. people. I know you are. Well, it is, in some ways you're corporate Chris, I'm going to bug you anyway. But I don't, I don't blame you for that. But the bottom line is that precludes you from going on. You can't opine on this show anymore. No, because no, it's the, 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 it's, it can't be done, no. Ergo, we lose Chris as a co-host. Mm -hmm. Um, I, we could continue on and find a new co-host, but first of all, I love the show how it is. I love what it's become with Magic Mike and Chris and Billah. Um, I still think you can get we, someone like Jessica Walson here, have a new dynamic. She's very smart. She's very funny. She, she's, she's fast and she's witty. I'm not killing it up by any means. Am I saying really any of that stuff? I think, I think you should talk to Jessica. I have, and she should come on the show. She's she, got some time. She, she doesn't uh, rant on Twitter, so we wouldn't have folded out. <laughs> no, no, but, uh, but I think you should, I th rather than just say this is, this, I, I, I think we should say this is the last show of the current incarnation. I think you should try to try to bring in Jessica, and I think if you convince her to, you'd have a fresh, youthful uh, injection to the show. All of that aside, that may happen, and this show may rise in another form, mm -hmm. much like the Phoenix didn't. Yep. The Phoenix 
disintegrated. I think yep. we had a beak, even the beak was formed at this point, and then it, yeah, yeah. it just disintegrated. <laughs> it was rising out of the ashes, and then yeah. <laughs> blow, breath yeah. of wind. Yeah, breath of wind just knocked yeah, it down. Yeah. It did back into the ashes. Mm-hmm. Um, well, for me right now, I can't keep it going right now due to time. I have to find full-time work. Yeah, you got to pay the bills. i got to pay the bills. you gotta, you got to buy the Persian princess or <laughs> Exactly. Like that. yep. She's sick we all her. do, and that's the reality of work, right? We, we're not independently wealthy, so you have to keep grinding. And you don't want to just do a job. You want to do a job that you have some kind of passion or interest interest in or something that you want to learn and, and work with a lot of smart yeah. people and in my case that's what in your case it would be if you do stay in the media business it's your passion and um, you don't want to just go and for the sake of it you know just go, go get a job digging ditches to pay the bills if you have to but if you have a choice to do something that can keep your mind going keep your passion going the bottom line is you got to pay the bills it's you do it's been a tumultuous like I was saying if there was a documentary crew that could have followed the implosion of our paper and all that happened with different media outlets reaching out there's a lot of friendships involved too yeah. like friendships of people who work at other media outlets yeah. where you're kind of being offered jobs and you you, you can't sure if you take him I, I I know I passed on Wallace had opportunities yeah, and we kind we're of hoping waited and passed because we waited for this newspaper and mm-hmm. then that kind of all goes to rat shit and you know, oh what do I do now but it's all going to work out in the end there's no hard feelings it, but instead of being a, a sad moment we're just going to celebrate our time today and I've I've spent Hours. hours, just hours of unpaid. You wouldn't believe labor. the hours. Duh. <laughs> Pulling clips. So we got a bunch of old clips that we're going to pull, um, and just look back. and And we have no guests today. It's going to be your guests are Magic Mike, and maybe we'll hear from Bill yelling at one point. And maybe and, Tuki will make an appearance. Oh, that's right. Maybe <laughs> Tuki. Maybe I'll play some outtakes from Tuki that Bill actually debuted a puppet one time. But we Marty was it. a massive, massive fan too. Uh, well, yeah, Marty it, loved it. <laughs> I have nothing against Tuki. Maybe, maybe it comes back for the final episode here. Anyway, let's go back to the first episode. That's the first clip I lined up before we play it. So this is May 12, 2021. Wallace and Kelly Olynyk were our very first guests on the show. Kelly Olynyk, NBA star. But do you have any memories of the first day? I actually, I don't. <laughs> no. I don't. I remember it, it, we didn't have the table. Um, no, this, so you made this special, didn't you? Yeah, then we decided we need a table. Mm-hmm. So we did like a pilot or something with that. Because Tim really put us all together, right? Yeah, we'll get into all the yeah. people and who put it together mm-hmm. near the end. But let's have a cl- uh, look right now. at Ready Clip uh, number one. Okay, here we go. This may just work. Start show. This is new for me. Mm-hmm. We are live, but we are also on tape from beautiful downtown Kamloops. We're in Studio 2 at Lee's Music. That's Chris Folds. I'm Marty Hastings, and this is the very first episode of our brand new... <laughs> I'm going to start again, sorry. You want to start again? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to f*** this first part up, sorry. <laughs> we are live, but we're also on tape... Sorry, guys. We are live, but we're also on tape from beautiful... Hold on, sorry. What's going on? Why, why is it, um, I don't know. Is it, we're going to do it one more time. All right. Take 10. <laughs> oh, I'm not ready yet. I can do it up. Wait for that Okay. Okay, here we go. Welcome, everybody. We are live, but we are also on tape from beautiful downtown Kamloops. We're in Studio 2 at Lee's Music. That's Chris Folds. I'm Marty Hastings, and this is our brand new show, Kamloops Last Week. Chris, what are we doing here? Uh, <laughs> so, what do you remember about that? I don't remember Dave. that. I, I, I didn't know we had two black tables. I remember yeah. it must. It was May. Was it May? May twelfth. <clears throat> so that was like twenty twenty one. That was like uh, almost four, four years, three years ago. Almost three. Yeah, I don't remember much. I remember. I guess it was warm because we were wearing short sleeves here. But I, um, I, I don't. I remember being pretty nervous. But it's, I, pain, I it's painful. I mean, yeah. I think we knew at the time it was going to be painful, yeah. but like it is actually hard to go and... I'm not <laughs> saying that we're that great now, but it is... Well, we didn't that, do, It's hard to watch those old clips. We didn't rehearse or nothing. We just sat down and started talking. We didn't know what we were doing. We, like today, we still don't, but at least now we're kind of comfortable in not knowing what That's we're doing. That's why you didn't think it was going to make it four episodes right there. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? It's, it's hard to put something together like this. There's, there's a lot of work that goes into it. I, I think to your credit, Marty, you um, you did a lot of the post editing because we we, sh- we shoot it like a, a live uh, production shot, uh, and then you go and you cut out all the mistakes and and use them as B roll for the beginning sometimes. And, and uh, but there's a lot that goes in to, to to all of it, you know. So there's um, 
I was willing to take a chance on it because I, I thought it was cool. Yeah. A cool setup. So. Well, we'll get into your importance um, in a little bit here. I've, I've kind of gone through with a timeline here. So the next kind of key moment I thought in our development was October 21, 2021. That was the first time we actually had a guest on. Do you remember oh, how it really? was? Really? Five months later? It took us till October oh. to have our very first in-person guest. Oh, I think I know who it is. You, you'll probably remember. It's a Diana Hartnell. It's Diana Hartnell. Oh, it's Peter I don't remember that at all. Peter Bakaki, remember? Yeah. She, very she emotional. Oh, yeah, yeah she was, I do remember, remember that. She was actually. selling her lo- beloved uh, uh, Learn to Skate, Learn to Play Hockey franchise. Peter Puck. Right. Subsequently, it's part of a lawsuit from uh, the, the great Brian McFarlane. I was thinking about yeah. that. I don't know the details on that. Yeah. We don't need to get into that, but I think there is, uh, unless we want to. But uh, no, here's a clip. Here's, here's a trademark name. Yeah. But, yeah. Chris, you don't age, eh? No, nope. oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> like, how many years ago did your kid take that? Uh, 14. I saw my first gray hair the other day. It kind of freaked me out. Oh, I bet. No, yeah. you, you, I'm not hitting on you right No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Are we recording right now? <laughs> Transfer of ownership. I loved Alicia's story. She went to your house and I had know. a few beverages. And, yeah. and she said you kind of went through the whirlwind of emotions that night. I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did. So. <laughs> what was going on that night? Oh, it was, you know, I shook her hand and just said... You know, it's done, and she's like, "You'll be fine, die." And it was like, I, I can't believe I'm not doing it right. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> do you have any Kleenex? <laughs> Is there like, I remember a switch going off for me. There's the power of of the guests. You know, having if you can have interviews like that where you get these people from the community, and um, th- that changed, I think, our show big time at that that point. Where did we have the tech? Technological know-how to like zoom that in. Zoom there. Cam. What happened to that before? zoom cam? Mike? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 that we, was a second camera I had set well, up. Well, we don't have that anymore. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was beautiful. And, and then at one point we had two PTZ cameras uh, going on. PTZ. But uh, PTZ. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe if we had those cameras, we'd still be we'd be rolling <laughs> next week. Because the, the problem was I use those cameras on other all the time, so I try to keep some consistency with the show. Okay. So we always had the same camera set yeah, up. Yeah, that was so. interesting. I forgot all about that. That was nice. But yeah, yeah she was a very nice guest. Diane's a, Diane, a very nice lady, and um, very emotional, very raw. It was nice. Do you have a a guest, your favorite guest that you that we had? Uh, I, I loved Buddy the Elf. Oh yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. that one always made me laugh. Uh, and Santa Claus, and I think the first year that we had Santa Claus on, he slept in or something, and we weren't sure if he was. Actually oh yeah, we had, we had, to, <laughs> we had to, actually had reshoot. We had to come we had back. to reshoot like <laughs> in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah, and you know what's funny about that is that episode I looked it up is the very first time you had a camera on you. Oh, is it? Was that was that Buddy oh, the Elf there episode? You go. Oh. Okay, let's move now to episode 33. I don't know the date of this, but this is also really where Fold started to catch his legs. Barrier Mayor oh, Ward, Ward Stamer. Stamer. Yeah. If we could play that clip. All right, here we go. Not only him, but Barrier Mayor Ward Stamer. He's another guy who has no backbone. He sent Jessica Wallace on, Saturday, on a Saturday night a text, unprofessional text. So I, uh, I called him up on Super Bowl Sunday and I said, hey, I got his voicemail. I said, you accused our reporter of misquoting you. I listened to the tape, and so I want you to call her and apologize in person like a man. And I will call me so we can talk it out. So it's been four days, and he hasn't called. So it tells you what kind of character he has. <laughs> I think he was in Mexico, right? He was in Mexico. And uh, he, did, he did come on the show, and, and he, was, he would answer the questions, and we ended up, uh, we ended up making up. And um, it was fine. But at the time, yeah, it, it was... I stand by that. At the time, it was, it was shortly after... Well, it was with with the TNRD spending scandal fresh in the minds of people, and that whole whole um, that whole thing. Um, I'm sure that that made a lot of the regional district politicians a little sort of sensitive, and to Wallace in particular. <clears throat> yeah, and I think so. And I th- and, and of course, Mayor uh, Stamer is he, he's, he's quite a, a, an aggressive guy. He's an outspoken guy. He's, um, he's, you know, which is what I like about him. He's, he says what's he thinking. He doesn't push his foot around. But he was wrong in this instant where he, he accused her of um, m- uh, misquoting her on, uh, him on some kind of story. It might have been linked to, to that issue. I'm not even sure. And I just thought it was, it was, you know, my job, even on a Saturday night, to call him and say, look, you know, you, yeah. um, you, you, you should. Because he, he, what he did was, he, I think he did it publicly. I'm not, I can't remember, but that's what kind of ir- irked us. It wasn't like... I think he said to someone she misquoted me where and Jessica of course was, you know, all about integrity and she didn't. So yeah. but I, I think he came on the show shortly after. He did. He yeah. did. Mm-hmm. 
Any thoughts on that one, Mike? The fruit. The fruit. The fruit on the table. New Leaf Produce new Market. Leaf oh, New Leaf, yeah. yeah. Well, you know what I liked about New Leaf is once in a while we got to take home that really good Concord grape juice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we <clears> took <throat> home a lot. Got a lot of veggies from them. Yeah. There, there were some shows that we do, and the placement of the fruit was <laughs> the not on purpose. But, <laughs> oh, but and you, you would turn. move around with the cucumber. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, New Leaf, we're going to give a big props to them because they kind of buyed the show with their support for Herman. basically a year. Herman Hothi. Yep. We'll get yep. to the advertising yep. stuff in a bit. I've prepared now. This is a long lengthy clip it's about 12 minutes i went back and uh it's the best of foldsy and it's not it's not uh comprehensive it's just I, I was late last night found some old stuff so let's roll this right now and 12 minutes is long do we want to watch the whole thing no i think you want to go maybe uh, just just roll a few okay, minutes here we go up here, you don't vote for the Prime Minister. There's no direct vote for the Prime Minister. You vote for the candidate in your riding. In comes Foldsy, okay? <laughs> Theo, period. That's right away you know you're, you're upset, the, the Theo and the period right there. You have gone beyond embarrassing yourself. You have no insight into politics. You have no clue what your conservative brethren support now or in the past. You are a concussed conspiracy theorist Yet help. That's right. Okay. That's right. He was uh, interviewed by another jackass, Tucker Carlson from Fox News, who gave this guy a platform to spew all sorts of nonsense. He embarrassed himself on Tucker Carlson. He was talking <laughs> about how Flurry thinks the, the pandemic was pe planned. I yeah. mean, it, once you get to that point, you know he's a wingnut. So I know there's a lot of Blue Jays fans in, in Canada. I can't stand them for, for many reasons, one of which they're a duplicitous organization that helped uh, with the demise of the Expos. But that's another argument for another day. This is what escapes all these people. They think, I'm not voting for Trudeau. Well, me neither. Nobody is. You can't vote for Trudeau. Ted Cruz piped up. And oh, he talked about Joe Biden and electricity in Texas. Did I say <laughs> something about him? Too? Oh, yeah, you did. Because I would have put cruise missile would be the other oh, word. Oh, yes. You said, well, Grandpa Munster. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about this. You I must have had a couple of glasses of wine. <laughs> you can always flee to Cancun, maintaining the cowardly cruise connection that leaves constituents, a lot of C's in there, to freeze and sucks up to a president who insults his wife. And then another punchy ending, Manana Theodore. <laughs> so what can you tell us about that one? I don't remember that one. It could have been into the boxed wine at that point. But um, Ted Cruz pisses me off, too. The fleeing thing, um, my buddy Robbie, we had the fires going on in Kamloops, and I just went to the coast for a weekend. He called right. me Kamloops Ted Cruz. For <laughs> <laughs> I think that was way too long. Maybe what I'll do yeah, is I'll yeah, cut, cut that up. Yeah, cut that I'll right cut up. it up cut and it, run it throughout yeah. the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you're seeing this. We've just watched all 12 minutes of Fold. So what I'll do throughout the show is you're just going to see random little clips of Folsey losing his mind so it's not all one block yeah. but anyway what do you think about that I didn't realize how much of a hate on he had for for Drake on a <laughs> continuous basis <Yeah. laughs> well, keep in mind it's a caveat this was all done in my capacity as an editor whose job is to opine on various things um, many which I know about many which I don't know about but um, I'll, st I'll stand. I'll stand on the Drake I'll stand on that Drake Hill till I die that he is I don't know if he, I just don't understand yeah. Let's just put it that way. It's just not for me. Well, we got to know each other a little bit more. And I go back to episode, those are some emotional moments that were shared. I go back to episode 50 here. Bill, if we can play this clip right now. I had the best dog in the entire world. Border Collie. Had him for 14 years. Uh, was our fur baby. He passed away on the weekend uh, at his happy place out at the lake. He will forever be remembered because uh, he was my—he was supposed to be my golden ticket to get to Las Vegas. But his big trick that he could do was shake a back paw. <laughs> <laughs> how, like, like reverse like this? Or no, how? like look at you, uh, sit down, put out his paw, and shake a back paw. Yeah. R.I.P. Zobo, uh, he will be forever missed. We had a dog named Ray, Border Collie as well, really smart. And my smart. mom trained that dog, put so much time into Ray. And then my mom passed away, and Ray moved on to, to um, my sister, and my sister took care of Ray. But when Ray died, it felt like I was, my mom was kind of, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, I know, it's crazy, <clears throat> I know, I know first ever tearing up here on the mm -hmm. show yes. um let's move on uh, let's, let's move on <laughs> yes. yeah you're a much prettier crier than i am i learned that on the weekend <laughs> that's uh, zobo right mike it was zobo yeah he was a great dog 14 years we had him and uh, yeah that was that was he waited to get to his happy place before he uh he decided that it was time and that was at uh, at the lake now i've got this 
Yes. Oh, it's that. Uh, oh, yeah. Look at the hair. <laughs> oh, he's so big. He was supposed to be 35 pounds. Yeah. But he's actually um, uh, 60 pounds now. Holy cow. And he's only seven months old. Oh, boy. And if you go onto the website and you can track their, like, the weight, he's going to be 120 pounds. We actually had we had Darby featured on this show. We're like goose stepping. Uh, oh yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you try to put the when it's really cold and oh, they, yeah, you, yeah. Put the, you put the booties on and they walk like a giraffe, baby giraffe, just getting born. Mm-hmm. Big moment for us. I think a huge accelerator in the show was the election. Everything, the lead up to it, the coverage of it, because um, we had on before the election. We had all well, we had four or five mayoral candidates on because only Reid didn't come on. At that time, we couldn't get oh. read in, in the, nor in the newspaper. There was some kind of he was too busy, and we we had a set schedule we had to keep to. So there was a little bit of a, um, there was a little bit of a, a debate or a um, an argument going between myself and and the mayor's team, because it wasn't fair to everyone else. Because you know, a month ahead, we said we're doing these features in the paper, and we, and we have the dates on the show. We have to stick to them. He was given his opportunity. Yeah, to come on. they were, and, yeah. and 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 everyone else worked their schedule around to interview in the paper because we had dates set and 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 uh, and uh, appearances on the show. That's right. Yeah, we had Triple A Ray, Dolly Wall, Arjun Singh, Dita Duty, and we had uh, Sadie Hunter. I think I pulled a Sadie Hunter clip. Uh, this is kind of what we we learned about what they thought about different policy and asked them a few questions about their vision. <laughs> Ray also talked about bullying and uh, harassment as well. That's something that you've talked about before. I just want to get your thoughts on on that. Arjun came on and said that he hadn't really seen it a, a, as much. So what's your take on that? Well, I think everyone probably has, well, everyone does have their own experience. Um, I, did, I have experienced it um, both externally um, from you know, members of the public and uh, in City Hall as well. And I've also observed it in City Hall. So one of my goals is to create a I think we need to come back to that culture of trust and building relationship and working on those dynamics that are making it hard for people to come together as a team or to make decisions, whether that be between counselors or between council and staff or council and the public. There is a general sense of distrust, and it is interfering, I think, with our ability to move forward as a community. Is there an example you can give? If, if you don't want to name names, that's fine, but is there, is there a more specific example you can give to give people an idea of how you experienced it? Um, I would say physical intimidation would be, I'll just phrase it as that. Mm-hmm. All right. My mind's been turning over here to the circle back for one second about what you said about physical intimidation. Um, you mean like you were physically, like you felt physically threatened by somebody? Um, yes. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm not going to go into to details, but it, it's happened more than once. Yeah. It doesn't, it hasn't just happened to me. Mm. Um, I've witnessed it happening to staff. It's, yeah. it exists. Okay. Naming names and identifying yeah. It takes away from the conversation yeah. that is important because it's not just the one incident or the one person. But it also, I think, takes away from the conversation around all of the issues that are important when people are considering um, who they're going to choose for mayor, who they're going to choose for council. I think we had a great forum, long form forum that other outlets didn't have. Like we could have 15 minutes, 20 minutes, like yeah. talking to these. Um, you know, important people, potentially important people in our city. And I think a lot of people started to pay attention when we had all these mayoral candidates on because they wanted to learn a bit more about them. You know, what's interesting about that clip with Sadie Hunter. I kind of forgot about that. When she was running for mayor, she mentioned unsolicited that she, one of her issues is bullying within and without of City Hall. And we, we did some stories at the time saying, well, what's going on in City Hall? And, and, and on, on that clip set there, you asked her and she said, she witnessed physical intimidation in City Hall against her and other people. I assumed it was the same person, but she said it's more than one person. So that brings me back to this. This is before the Reed era. This is before all the all the investigations and the code of conduct violations in the report and the allegations against Reed. This is before he was going on there. So she's talking about what she saw well before Reed was elected. So. It's tough to know because she's not naming names. We don't. Yeah, we can't. But, we can't but she did any. say in city hall, so that's yeah. that's just interesting in that it has nothing to do with the mayor who's now under fire. So, just interesting. 
I guess bullies don't like getting bullied. <laughs> yeah, well, what they say, they say the bully is weak, right? If you stand up to a bully, generally they, that's the last thing they want, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Before he got into politics, he wrote this essay for um, for this for this book. What if I was prime minister, I would do this. And one of his most main points was a two-term limit for MPs. You can't serve more than two terms. He's on his seventh term already. This guy. He's and, and he talks about milking the taxpayers. He's the biggest milker of taxpayers in the world. And does that ten dollars actually uh, help to cover the cost? It doesn't. It's 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 clear and simple. It's a it's a it's a it's a fee to deter people from asking questions. That, that's plain and simple what it is. The ten dollars does nothing to to recoup the fees. Yeah. So, and I'm not just picking on Pierre Polyev. I'm picking on any career politician from municipal to provincial to federal. Serve your time and get the hell out. Let someone else in there. Good. I mean, my point is not just him. These kind of um, prepared statements are so awkward to me, too. Yes. Like, he's doing his... You were the boss. Forced point that well, maybe yes. only uh, Michael Potestio has a more yes. awkward throwback. So, that is all for me for now. Back to you guys in the studio. They get a $150,000 a year pension, plus they're allowed to expense to the taxpayers $206,000 per year <laughs> after they leave the job. <laughs> Where do you get a deal like that? When he was 31 years old, he, six years after getting elected, he could have had his full pension. Full pension. Do you think we have a full, you know, you know what his full pension is? It's me and you paying for this guy's digs. Yeah. I mean, holy cow, I got my pension statement from Camelus this week, last oh, I'm week. Oh, big trouble. And it said, it said, hey, congratulations. If you keep contributing, the amount you're contributing, when you're 65, you'll get 8000 bucks a year. Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. I should have become a teacher or a governor general. It's you just, wouldn't be a good governor general. It's in, you would be fired so quick and not for money. You'd be, you'd be popping off on social media. It's, in, it's indicative. So. Uh, let's go now. We actually had kind of an election night show, not here, but you and I. At the office, at the newsroom. Yeah. During the municipal election of 2022? Uh, yes, I think if we had... Oh, that's when the uh, email got lost in my inbox, right? Yeah, I remember <laughs> yeah. that. Okay. The same one where we invited you for beers together. They're yeah. all just these... Or, that or, was, or the coffee this morning, right? Yeah, yeah. I forgot yeah. your coffee yeah. this yeah. morning again. Okay. Uh, but we had this little uh, analysis on election night. A lot of people called him a single issue candidate. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the issue that matters to people according to the polls here. Yeah. But, but can he, does he know how to exact change in that position? Well, he's going to find out really quick. He's going to find out really quick what he can and cannot do based on his, um, based on his, um, what he wants to do in his campaign. He's going to find out that the powers of the mayor and city council are way more limited than a lot of people think. Yeah. But he's also going to learn how to lobby, how to talk to the powers that be. And like Dale Bass, Dale Bass said at a bunch of forums, the new new councillors, the new mayor, they're all going to learn how things are much slower than they wish and how it's hard to get things done, even if you want to get them done. Yeah, I wrote down a few things of questions I think he has to answer. How is he going to represent the city in public spaces with mm -hmm. other levels of government? Um, will he be able to bring people together on council um, to make sure the team works together? Yep. Is he going to be a catalyst in that or is he going to going to hurt that i think he has to answer those questions is this going to be a drama filled tenure uh, will he be able to deliver the change that he promises with the street issues and the fun night to mm -hmm. me to be doing that i mean we would have loved to have mike there but <laughs> i suggested that. it but you said no <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was interesting. Like you said, it will be a drama. So far, it's been drama filled, hasn't it? For for a year and a half now, a year mm -hmm. and a bit. Um, yeah, it's been really drama filled. So, yeah, yeah. Um, let's move on because it's already ten twenty, and I'm sure Mike and Bill have other things to do today. We got a bunch more clips to get to. So that election spawned Reed Hamer Jackson. This wasn't part of Reader's Digest yet, though. This was just him coming on our show for the first time, and after we, being elected, after being elected, and we yeah. saw right away that he's kind of a goes about his business a little bit differently. What are your thoughts on the, the makeup of council and how you're going to work with them? Well, I think I'll work with them good. Some, some, mm -hmm. some, you know, it's just like a, it's just like a team, right? You don't have everybody on the same page. And I mean, it went, again, I'll, I'll mention Dale Bass's name. I mean, I think she uh, deserves to give me an apology and mm -hmm. I had no intentions of starting any in concentration camps. It's all, and she knows that it's about recovery and you kind of come in all guns a blazing here, though, right? I heard John and Elle last night, and I, I chuckled a couple times, but you kind of suggested that um, some of the team members are a little bit weaker than the other ones. I mean, are you concerned about how that's going to resonate with, the, with some of the council members, some of the comments that you that you kind of come in all guns a blazing with? Well, I don't know. Katie Newhauser just texted me this morning, and uh, so I'm having lunch with Stephen Carpuck at noon, and uh, met with Kelly Hall, talked to Kelly up there. Mm -hmm. Me and Bill Sry are going to go for a 
a drive. You know, we had, I gave him an option. You know, I said, because me and Bill have had a little bit out there. We've known each other for a long time. And mm -hmm. so I said, well, let's do one of two things. Let's go fishing or let's go for a drive in a vehicle. Because at 100 kilometers an hour, you're not going to be jumping out. You could talk okay? about things. Exactly. So anyway, he picked he picked going for the ride. So I, I think he doesn't like swimming or something. Okay. Anyway, I'm just joking. Well, can you That's be a leader said, yeah. that's going to bring people together on council to get things accomplished? You bet. You bet I can. This seems a bit divisive right now with the, the, the Dale Bass talk. You know, Why didn't you go to the council well, meeting yesterday? <clears throat> well, number one, I, I was actually watching some of the council meeting, but, but the citizens of the community are the people that elected me. And when I've got 400... Uh, texts and messages and everything like that. I've been to council meetings. I mean, for me to sit there, what was I going to do there? Well, well it was the last pay, meeting. Pay your like, respects, like a, pay respects you know, to the former mayor and the council. It's, it's sort of like the, the, the and show a united the, front the for, the, for the new one, for yeah. the, for the well, new one. Well, That's why, what well why didn't they invite me? I thought you were invited. Were you not invited? No, I wasn't invited. I was told that all the uh, incoming councillors and you were, were invited by the outgoing council. Well, I'd like to see the emails or the text. Maybe you Actually, you know what? Hang on. It could be because my phone is buzzing right now as we speak. Yeah, so I think I, I think that was the first time we had Reed on our show. Do you remember anything about that, Mike? I, I actually remember that. Yeah, yeah. He was. Um, I liked his uh, either want to go for a car ride or a boat ride. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I used to take people for walks in the park when our factory was on the uh, edge of Riverside Park. Oh yeah, and that was our our chat time. Oh, to know. really iron things out? Yeah. yeah and, okay. and if we couldn't figure it out by the time we did the loop around the park, then maybe it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, that's a good you know? idea. But uh, sure. I, I get that. You need to have that one-on-one -on -one time without the distractions. But yeah. uh, <laughs> Anything yeah. from you? No, that was, that, that was shortly after uh, October. That was like in the fall of, uh, late fall of, of uh, 22. Um, no, just he, he, he would, he's just like I was laughing watching that. I, I know p people say, "Oh, you might you laugh too much with him," but he's he's honestly a funny guy, and um, especially at the beginning because you know he was so off the cuff. Right? Yeah, and I just thought thought it was funny because you know he was really upset with with Dale Bass's comment. He wanted the apology. I think shortly after there, both of them appeared on the show at the same time. Funny you mention it. Funny you mention that because <laughs> I have that. In all of this kind of election bundle that really yeah. kind of was a big deal for our show, we had all eight city councillors on after, which was I thought was was awesome. You yeah, yeah. you organized it, yep. where we had every week pretty much in a row we had all these new incoming mm -hmm. councillors on to talk, and it just so happened we didn't plan this. No, episode seventy we had Dale Bass on, and the same day was the debut of Reader's Digest. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a clip here. I just missed, I mashed them. They weren't on at the same time, but they were on the same show. And, I and they passed each other in the hall. They here. passed each other in the hall. And so Reed, Reed yeah. <laughs> you, what do you remember about well, that? Well, he, he, he came in and it was, it was still hot because he was still upset of her for her comments during the campaign that, you know, his, his idea was a, was a concentration camp for a, for a treatment facility in Rayleigh. And he, and he was wanting an apology. And then between then, I had heard that to, to, to make things, ease things out, I heard that in, in, a, in a private meeting, Dale finally said, "Look, okay, if this is going to stop this, I apologize." You know, in a way that says, "Look, if 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 if, if, if this is what it's going to take to get us moving forward, I apologize." And then, so when he came in that day to do his segment, and Dale was here, she went, "Oh, there's the Reed," and, and he says, "Did you did you hear she apologized?" Yes, yeah, so he announced this <laughs> he apology announced it to everybody. And she thought was I think she thought was supposed to be a private a private thing. apology within, and then she's kind of just rolled her eyes, and and I thought that was kind of humorous. That's all. It was an interesting interaction. So here's the clip right now. Yep. Has your working relationship with the mayor improved? Because it started with this whole apology thing back and forth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we talk. Has that been settled? You just had a little run-in with Dale Bass as she was leaving, you were coming in. Uh, how's that relationship? That relationship is, well, in, in my mind, it's good because she's apologized to me. She, uh, uh, she said she didn't want to do it publicly, but she said that I could, so that's why I'm You were saying. seeking an apology from Dale Bass because... Dennis Walsh was putting a motion forward to do a recovery facility on the outskirts of town. I don't want to mention where, yeah. but anyway, uh, and it was not it was not mandatory. It was not it was it was people that I'd spoken to on the streets. Idea to get them away from temptations to to, get, to, to do a recovery clean them facility, up in the rural area to do a recovery facility. Yeah. And um, and she said, which which you know what she said. She said that she went on the I was radio, around, what, radio and she went with what she call it uh, rounding people up, fence them off, and put them in concentration camps. Concentration camp, and that upset you. We talk. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's like a non-answer right there. I've become a politician. 
<laughs> no, we talk. You know, like he, he asked me to be deputy mayor in January. He still hasn't done that yet, but he's going to get that schedule done as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we talk. It's what not only upset me, it affected me. I've, I've had threats and stuff okay. like that. Like, yeah. you know, it's not something I had to call my buddy in Winnipeg and say, hey, you know. Why did the mayor recuse himself? I am, you're going to have to ask him. You know, um, he, he, he came in, uh, started the meeting, said he had a conflict of interest, and left. Somebody, you know, he's a juice fella, right? Yeah, yeah. Says, <laughs> you know, if that happened and you're in a, in a, you know, you got 300 people around you all with mental health and addiction problems, and somebody knew that, it's not like I haven't had enough chances to get stabbed or shot. You know, you'd have to ask the mayor why he did it. It's Oops. unusual, let's say, put it that way. And she said, I'm not going to apologize for the longest time, but you just said now, you just broke the news. When did she apologize to you? Can we assume this is a one off thing? Ask him. I mean, if, if it isn't, how does that affect his ability to lead on social issues if you can't talk about them? Ask him. <clears throat> she apologized to me the other day, um, last week. Oh, okay. Well, this is well, that's many good. fences we're moving forward. That's good. So it's all uh, kumbaya now over the council. <laughs> the floating head there, eh, Mike? Yeah. Yes, yeah, don't, don't wear black on yeah. a black background. <laughs> Those, those, li those were lively interviews. Yeah, they were good. The law was a little bit different when you knew you had a spicy guest coming on. Mm -hmm. And this well-known real estate person in town lists it for double the price, seventeen fifty. It's not even worth a thousand. Yeah. Greed, hundred percent greed, and it's it's bullshit. And there should be laws not only on raising the rents when you're in there. There should be laws about what you can set the rent at based on the other previous rate after someone moves out. It's just, it's terrible. And the people who do this have no compassion, have no empathy. Your canvas this week in 2021 did a, did a big feature on TNRD spending that Wallace. And we're up for the Missioner Award, which yeah. is the premier journalism award in Canada, created by a Governor General Missioner in 1971. And guess who's gonna be there to greet us? Mary Simon. What type of expense bill are you gonna rack up on KTW? I there? am not gonna expense anything. I'm paying for everything. And when I meet Mary Simon, I'm not accepting <laughs> one, <laughs> one morsel of food. You better not have had too many pints before. I you am not, no, it's gotta stop. I I watched the game at, from nine o'clock till about midnight, and I woke my wife up and said, "They won! They won!" And she was, <laughs> I'm sure she was thrilled with that she, red wine breath. Oh, go she, no, she was great. She, she actually looked at the she looked at the score before she went to bed, and she knew I'd be happy. So, yeah. The point of all of this preamble, Don, you're on cloud nine. Here yeah. comes Don Taylor. We love Don Taylor. We love Don Taylor. Yeah. He checks in. Was that the biggest, most impressive BC Lions win since the 2011 Grey Cup? Had to be, but oh no. Here comes, in swoops, Jay Barnsey. Concise, like you. CFL sucks. Yeah. That's all he said. <laughs> and in comes Fultzy. Jay Barnes is a monosyllabic cretin with an IQ in the range of a Drew Locke QB rating. Piss off, troll. <laughs> so, first of all, Drew Locke is thrown under the bus too here. Well, well, he's obviously a guy who only watches the NFL. So I thought, well, let's pick a quarterback near geographically to Vancouver sports fans' hearts, which is Drew Locke, who's going to lead the, the Seahawks out of the playoffs this year. He's not a very good quarterback, so hence the reference. Yeah. So you, at that point, you're probably feeling like that was cathartic. You got out of your system, good, you yes. hammered this CFL hater, but oh no, because it's not done yet. Here comes Jolly Jim 55. Was not aware the CFL was still in existence, he yeah. says, and here comes Foldy. And you know you're mad when you bring in the Unabomber. The Unabomber somehow comes up. You said, you might want to break your lease with Ted Kaczynski. Let him keep the cabin and join the real world. <laughs> well, if he didn't know the CFL was relevant, if he hadn't heard of Nathan Work, who's probably the most popular guy in the world right now, then the guy's obviously living in a cabin uh, with a manifesto and sending bombs elsewhere. Okay, let's move on. Episode 71, major moment, Magic Mike. This is where, because you, I texted you because I couldn't remember if you actually had a mic up before you were on camera. Did you have a mic up from the start? Or did you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you weren't vi visible until later. Well, right? it, it wasn't until Volkswagen uh, sponsored us that uh, I, got, I got a camera, rear facing camera. It was actually, they weren't quite on board yet. So remember, we had all that mad scientist scribbling oh, before. Oh, yeah. But it was episode 71. Santa and Buddy's first appearance, the show changed for the better with Magic Mike's first appearance. Deep down in the bowels <sighs> of lease music. Chris Folds, no Greg the Engineer today, Magic Mike and Bill at the controls. Magic Mike, let's show your beautiful new camera, the Magic Mirror. Wait, I can make it. Oh, I can make it look like the teddy bear's got hair. <laughs> You're not showing up on, oh yeah, This is the are. new uh, Magic Mike Mirror. 
young me Michael looks I know. Very, yes. short, short hair, Mike. Yeah. yeah. But you came onto the show and totally changed it for the better. You are. You brought a, a business element. You brought an arts element. You're a bit quirky and, and funny and goofy, and, and it made our job so much better and so much more fun when you were on the show with us. So what you know? What do you remember about that first day where you, you the the camera came on? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember that one either. I, I don't remember that uh, that particular day, but um, I, I've always had fun, and and I think part of the show. Um, I've always kind of talked on the microphone and, and we had that interaction kind of a thing with the engineer kind of a thing, right? So um, I've always liked to be able to ask about arts and and uh, not really interject into the uh, the sports comments too much. <laughs> it was actually Tim Schultz, to his credit, kept on saying, get a camera, because we hear him all the time, it's t- get a camera, and eventually we you know, push your buttons and, and you go to camera. Tim Schultz, the uh, former GM, the guy who led KTW uh, before... Um before leaving to go to St. Albert. Yeah. To, uh, My favorite over floating head there. that we run, I'll run it right now, his big yeah. floating head, Tim Schultz. Yeah. Um, Tim I, 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 we're going to talk about him a little later on. Mm-hmm. So that, to me, was a big moment, Magic Mike. What what do you think Mike's brought to the Oh, show? everything. He's brought balance. He's brought a different perspective. He's, he's uh, a good buffer, um, <laughs> both him and Bill. And um, he's a very smart guy, very funny guy. Yeah, because um, sometimes we'll be out of things to say, and I'll just say, okay, Mike, what do you think? Yeah, and, he, he, <laughs> and when you have guests and you ask Mike, he'll always have a question we didn't even think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. Okay, good stuff. Let's move on. I Episode- love you guys too, man. Oh. <laughs> Starts off calm as it normally does. Just, hi, he says the person's name, which we'll, we'll leave out of it. This is Chris, Veronica's father. I am certain you are aware of all that has transpired. <laughs> I do not care to discuss in any detail what you do or how you live your life. (laughs) But you really need to understand very clearly when I say here and now that I do not want you to be in contact with my daughter from this point forward. No texts, no calls, no conversations at school, no attending her work, no eye contact. Pretend Veronica does not exist. Do not reply to this message. Simply honor my request and this ends here and now. <laughs> Do not honor my request and we can take it to the next level. Have a good night. <laughs> my favorites have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> At the very end, he always ends with something punchy. <laughs> well, in the retrospect, it might have been a little bit over the top. But at the time... It was um, effective. <clears throat> well, did he ever talk to you? Never again. again. Yeah, so... Um, and, and I think he turned his life around. He's doing okay, I hope. Yeah. I don't know. What, what type of memories does that evoke in general for you? Um, you know, actually, it actually evokes the biggest memory is like getting to know and respecting my stepmom because she was very new in my life. I know it feels like it all comes back to Catherine, but yeah. she's a clinical counselor. And thank God for that because dad thinks I'm just like ruining my life. It's thrown away. I'm 14, tried a little bit of marijuana. But then Catherine comes in who's seen it all, dealt with it all. And she's like, you need to take a chill pill. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, this isn't bad. Veronica's fine. Yeah. Let her live. And so, yeah, he went from me coming home to being like, you'll never see your friends or phone again. You come home every day and you go to bed. And the next day he's like, let's just drop this. Yeah. I talked to Kath and we're good. <laughs> key fobs. I want to talk to you about key fobs. Who's calling you? Who is it? I got work. My daughter called because her, something's wrong with her tire in North Vancouver. And then uh, I got to, I don't know, it goes through my work, so I don't know who this is, but I got this. Uh, what about key fobs? Your phone is, it's un Believable today. Yeah. Key parties? You, uh, the Scotties and the Memorial Cup. Again, because we had this opportunity to get all these really cool guests. So let's start with episode 80. This is a little Scotties clip. We got to speak to Carrie Anderson. Uh, Anderson that was Lori, last year, Lori right? St. Yeah. George, Rachel Holman, Vic Router, Jennifer Jones, all these big, big curling stars. And here's a little clip of, of that. The food here is amazing, and we're all foodies, and my, da- the, my daughters are foodies too. So we're going to go out for some uh, a good food tonight. We went to Mitzi's, Mitzi's I think it's Mitzi's Mitz- Kitchen. Mitzi's, yeah, kitchen already. Um, I think we're going to go to Twisted. We've gone to um, we went to a great breakfast at Hello Toast. Toast. Yes. So we've, uh, you know, short period of time, we've done some, and we wanted to go for a drive. We went to Vernon because we wanted to drive through and see all the lakes, and it's just so beautiful. And I know my husband's going to take the girls up, hopefully go skiing at Sun Peak, so. It's actually the first time that I've been here, 
Um, so, but it's beautiful. I wish I could actually live here. Like I'm seeing Montreal now and I'm like, mm, wow, BC is so beautiful. Well, that was cool. That was like last year, right? So we had the Scotties, the premier national women's curling championship. I think it was February. And followed a few months later by Memorial Cup. It was a big year for, for, for national tournaments here. I like what they were saying and you could tell it wasn't just, they weren't just sort of like saying, oh, it's a great, they were really, really liked uh, Kamloops and what they see because a lot of people don't realize, you know, it's it's pretty beautiful. Like uh, Donnie and Dolly, uh, you know, oh, they've been our, talking a lot lately. One of our favorite Kamloops. favorite shows. They were talking about, you know, Kamloops, and Don was defending it because they had um, they're in Spain. The white they, they showed the white caps uh, training facility in Spain. It's next to a, a highway in a mountain. It's beautiful, but it's not like drop dead gorgeous. It's just as, it's, uh, pictures here from Hillside Stadium where the Lions and the Lions were raving about it are just as nice. And when Don said, if you look at the view from above when the Lions practice at Hillside in the mountains and the river and Kenna Cartwright it's it's as nice as what you see there and 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 uh, Do- Dolly and Ryan were like no way it's yeah. Spain just because it's Spain doesn't mean it's be- more beautiful BC is way more beautiful than France and Spain we've been to both and and, and overall BC is, is way more stunning well, beautiful British Columbia yeah. my bet for the best place in the world but yeah. we're biased Spain's also beautiful were you gonna say something Mike no, I just th- there's a reason why they put that on the license plates. Beautiful That's right, beautiful Columbia. BC. That's yeah. right. It, it's by law because it's a fact. <laughs> That's right. That's, but uh, no, getting back to what they were saying um, when they liked the food and they and they, and they shot out various restaurants and even the the French, uh, the, the Quebecois. Um, Kurt there, you can tell she's like she was in awe with what she saw here growing up in Montreal, which is a beautiful city too. Yeah, and the folks at the city, when they talk about some of the spinoff that we get from having these events in our city, us talking about Donnie, because Donnie and Dolly picks it up. Next, you know, they're talking about beautiful Kamloops. You know, it's all these kind of mm-hmm. um, unexpected bonuses that you get. From, they call it from in the business earned media, earned media, where mm-hmm. where, where, where you just just the, just the discussion and the publicity um, incidental is 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 worth the quantified um, like the BC Lions training camp here, right? The city pays them fifty grand a year, but the it's worth according to the calculations the city does based on promotions and based on word of mouth, it's worth three hundred grand. Now, is Don Taylor going to be raving when the practice field is covered by smoke? <clears throat> well, that's, probably not. That's the, but, that's the thing that's going to be. Hopefully. But then again, where the Whitecaps were were um, were practicing in in Spain was the exact spot that was smoked out when we were in France, and you and my daughter took a trip down to Barcelona. Yeah. That was covered in smoke. So that was scary. We almost had to turn our, our well, train almost turned go. around. It's, glo- glo- it's glo- on, the, on our way to Barcelona. It's climate change. How, how does man? the train it's turn everywhere. around? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, We've got a crazy system over there in Spain. Just U turns everywhere. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Memorial Cup next. Another amazing time for our show. Mm-hmm. All the guests that we had. Haley Wickenheiser, Daryl Sador, Craig Button, Ken Hitchcock. Here's a little clip, Memorial Cup, episode 94. What's that like, being kind of like a bad guy a little bit in, in BC to a some hometown people? bad boy, a bad guy. Yeah. yeah, I'm okay with that because we won the Cups. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay, you know, like, it, yeah, I mean, they definitely, I mean, it's been... 12 yeah, years, probably, yeah, 12 yeah. years now, and they still bring you know, it comments. is what, yeah, they still, yeah. I mean, it's amazing, but you know, but that's they're passionate about their sport, and I mean, that's fine. I mean, I, you know, I, I grew up here in Kamloops, and this is my hometown, and you know, I know, I know what the people are like here, and you know, I have an amazing time here, and you know, Vancouver is a different ballgame, but that's fine with me. Like, you know, I'm very fortunate to, to win a cup at the end of my career in BC, yeah. and uh, you know, have them, all my family there, and and uh, that was pretty special time and, and uh, you know but somebody had to win or lose and I'm glad it was me and I, I'll take the heat for it so it's okay. For nothing that game was. I actually just played uh, Mark Recchi's uh, brother in curling a few weeks ago. Matt. Matt I think he's just kept a very good team. Yeah. They moved Did up. they beat you? Oh yeah they're up and we're down so, so but uh, that was good and um, I forgot we had Mark Recchi. Matt Recchi's That's a big cool. fisherman too I think. Big into fishing. He's a good guy. Really good guy. How did you know it was for nothing? Well, back, back in the game seven, 2011, it was 4 nothing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who doesn't know that? What date was that in 2011? Uh, I think seven? it was uh, June 14th or June 15th. We should double check uh, you that. You got to check that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. This, I think, is maybe your favorite episode. It's right up there. It's right up there. Probably my favorite episode, maybe. It's kind of a sad one, too, but Kamloops last week, Kamloops this week shut down. This is KLW113. We called the episode Kamloops this week. We just kind of had, like, mm-hmm. what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. We talked about the end of our newspaper, so here's a little clip right now. Mm-hmm. No. Actually, I thought this would be a good time to talk about this guy and what he's meant to all of us. Yeah, that would be great. So, does somebody want to go <laughs> and start? <laughs> okay, I guess I can go. This is... Um 
yeah. What do you say about Chris? Because he's just the man behind the curtain. Nobody ever really understands the impact that he has. He is the newspaper, to be honest. Um, we're just all, you know, more in the public than he is. He uh, is the brain. He <laughs> is the person who puts in all the work. He is, he is the newspaper. He like he doesn't get any accolades and it kind of frankly ticks me off my my best moment was when i got to see him at rideau hall speaking in front of everybody in such a he was the only person who made everybody laugh like he was the smartest person in that room for me it was always great chris learned pretty early on how to um, release the reins a bit and give you more leash and uh, and let his newsroom have that privilege of feeling that they had some autonomy in what they were doing in the, their direction. Not only did he you know do that but through that happening it encouraged you and it lifts you up to kind of go yeah I, I can tackle this I can become a uh, more of a journalist than I realize and for me it was, that's when I got choked I said this choked, is up. choked up. <laughs> And I, so I said, I should tell Chris that. And I said, no, it's just too emotional, too personal. And I got up and I said, I'm going to miss that. And he said, miss what? And I said, just those moments of being able to walk to your office and become back smarter than I was when I first you know, came in the office that morning. And uh, yeah, those little moments of, uh, and, and I was going to miss. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll just echo what everyone said already about you. You know, I've said it already on radio broadcast about being a father figure and a mentor to me. And uh, Jessica Wall said it. Uh, it's tough for me to picture my life without, without you in it. So yeah. let's keep going if we can. Yeah, let's keep this thing going. <laughs> let's keep going. <clears throat> let's keep this thing going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's the end of it. No, I, I love, I think we'll be able to look back on that episode in years to come and be pretty happy that we did it. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That, that was a heartfelt one. Yeah. That, that one was, that was hard. That was actually a hard episode because you, you, I think at that moment you realize that it was an end of an era. Yeah. And that, that it, how, how much it actually affected yeah. people. It that, was, it was pretty inside baseball -y, but whatever, we, you know, we, we were going to do it. And I think maybe we didn't mention enough a lot of the salespeople, I think because there was some kind of backlash. Some, we didn't do that on purpose. I mean, obviously the, the salespeople were, and all the salespeople throughout the years at KTW were imperative for keeping it going, but they we, were the we, we focus a lot on the editorial side of things. Well, because we, that's, we are, but they are the most important part. Without the salespeople, there's no, there's no newspaper. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that was kind of it for my milestones. We do have some more clips to get to here. Talk about our advertisers a little bit. Mm. Um, because we can't do the show without them. Our very first advertiser was Tara Holmes. Holmes is where the heart is matchmaking, <laughs> right. and she was a guest on our show multiple times, huge supporter of the show. Mm -hmm. So thanks to Tara. But did you know that there was one placeholder ad that came on before Tara's paid ad? Ooh. Great job. This, <laughs> all right, Marty, you're doing a really great job. This show's going to be golden. And Chris, you're going to be doing... Marty, Chris, yeah, whatever. It doesn't really matter. You guys are going to rock it. I'm so excited. <laughs> this is Mike from Lee's Music. Whatever you need for your touring needs, for streaming needs, when the pandemic's over and you want to grow your hair out long and do that thing that you've always wanted to do, give me a call. I'll fix you up with musical instruments, with whatever it is. I'm here. www.leesmusic.net We haven't even started recording yet. This guy's trying to get free advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Did you forget about that? I, forgot, I totally forgot I about forgot that. I forgot we were wearing masks. You know what was funny is too. you legitimately called me Chris that day when you first came up to me. <laughs> like you, we didn't even know. We didn't really know yeah, each other at all. And then we did a riff on that. Yeah. No. And it kind of worked out well. We wanted to show people you could advertise on our show. And you kind of just on the spot made this ad for us. That so. was funny. Yeah, yeah. That was cool. Our first mainstay, though, was New Leaf Produce Market. Herman. <coughs> Herman Holti. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an idea. It might have, well, he never wanted to be on camera. He hated pictures. He didn't want video. So I did come up with an idea, and I think with the help of Tim Schultz. Okay, why don't we get it? We'll take this nice photo of him, and we'll create a cardboard cutout, and then from there, I can kind of have some creative fun and do some stuff. And boy, did we ever do some stuff with that cardboard cutout. Uh, along with all the weird vegetables and phallic shapes on the, <laughs> on the table. But here's a little clip uh, of um, New Leaf Produce, Produce Market and Herman. I think we went to Abbotsford um, to, what's it called? Um, uh, Newfeld Farms. Newfeld Farms. Yep. And I took them to the island as well. Is it working for you? Yeah, it's working okay. <laughs> He's a super nice guy. He's awesome. 
You hear that? Herman Hothi. Hell of a nice guy. We're going on a road trip. Let's go, buddy. Hermie, you gotta buckle up, okay? It's not gonna work. What's that, Herman? In you get, Herman. Ma, yeah, in, yeah, but let's go. Get me some sour keys, pal. No peeking, Herman. Help my goodness, Steve. Are these strawberries ever good? You're quiet today, Herman. Want some corn? Have a bite, Herm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so New Leaf Produce Market, we could not have had the show because they were in incorporated with the paper, but they were yeah. paying to advertise on our show, and that's why we could, you know, in part pay you, and I think. Without them, we couldn't do the show. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and, and you carried that thing around like crazy. You went every, to Abbotsford. You went to Victoria with that thing every week. You'd bring it in here. Yeah, it, did it live in your car? We went down to uh, yeah. Well, it's, it scares the hell out of me to this day at home. <laughs> and actually, my girlfriend walks in the closet, opens there's her Yeah, yeah. And, and what I love about those is when you do that, it creates a vacuum and it kind of comes towards the door, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, oh, I took him to Hot Night in the City uh, to the booth we had there and that's got right. people taking pictures with her. Yeah, that's right. Um, but our three mainstays so mcdonald's joined us in february of 22 and to this day mm. have been with us so that's more than well, two, almost two years. two years two years oh, well two years yeah two years for, for mcdonald's so brandy seek on here oh <laughs> look at that <laughs> thank you that's this cranberry orange these are my favorite muffins cranberry orange yeah brandy seek on thank you so much for all your support over the years um we also had gourds appliance and mattress center Steve mm -hmm. Rogers, they came on board May 2022. So they almost made it two years with us as well. Mm -hmm. And Terry. Low, 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 low rates. And Chris still doesn't get that. No, I don't. He doesn't get understand. That. I still don't understand. Uh, he, they came on March 2023 to sponsor uh, the Magic Mirror brought to you by Volkswagen. And they, with their help, sustained this show. Couldn't do it without them. And I think now what I'd like to do is talk about our weekend that we had this last weekend. But just want to remind you guys, in case you've kind of forgotten, that we had a big extra special weekend where we actually involved all of our sponsors of all time. As you will remember from this weekend that we had, if you remember all our sponsors too, just as a quick reminder, we had Homes is Where the Heart Is, New Leaf, Twin River Painting, Cold Control Mechanical, McDonald's Gourds, Best Stamp, Best Stamp. <laughs> Club Car, the Kamloops Wide Dream Home, Maca Ranch, and the Kamloops Blazers. Mm. It was a busy weekend. Yeah, it was crazy. It ended with a bunch of club cars. I remember that. Um, Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. What did we do, Chris? Well, I just remember that because it was a weekend where it was a little colder than the weekend before. Mm -hmm. We thought we would go, like, go back to the start. We'd like to bird watch at the beginning. We'd go down to the river to see, is there any ice and how's the river looking after all that snow and is it coming up and how's the drought looking? The eagles. The eagles, right? And then We, we decided uh, that was a bad idea because we've yeah. done it so many times. Mm -hmm. And we, swi we switched gears and we did something a little more exciting. What, what was it again? Well, we went back to hot yoga, which was Chris's favorite. <laughs> but there was a problem with the, um, the studio because it wasn't hot enough mm -hmm. and we weren't sweating enough. That's right. So we had to call up Vinny yeah. uh, to come in and fix control. it again. Yeah. From Cold control. Vinny and Dustin from Cold Control Mechanical, they came on by. And as a matter of fact, I remember that yoga studio. The walls were bleeding and all the paint was messed up because mm, it was so hot so in there. Hot. And he was confused again from all. Flummoxed. He was flummoxed by the ro low rates at Volkswagen. So yep. he was sweating in a panic, heated up the walls. Yep. Walls started bleeding basically all their paint. Mm. Twin River Painting had to come in. So we called Brendan Crowser. Oh, yes, Brendan. Yeah. You remember Brendan Crowser? I know Brendan, yes. He's a guitar player. He's a River Song owner. And, and uh, yeah. He actually, on the, his way to the yoga, uh, yoga studio, though, his car broke down. Mm. His car broke down. He was just happened to be though out at the Valley View, e Valley View Drive. Yeah. What was he doing out there? Well, he was out there. Um, yeah, he was out there looking at the uh, SUVWs. SUV SUVWs. SUVWs. Right. Yeah. And yeah. he was on his phone. Mm. He's a big gambler. Mm. He's making some bets with Betstamp. Yeah, and you can bet on, bet anything. Yeah. Really? Yeah. How long the uh, 
KTW showed last. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could you could also KLW. bet on how much the next Kamloops wide dream home mm-hmm. is worth. Yeah. On Betstamp. It's a crazy yeah. app they have. Was, yeah, absolutely. Krauser finally showed up and there were people who were basically from all the heat, they were passed out, they were famished. They mm-hmm. needed nutrition. Mm-hmm. And I know a place on the North Shore. The, mm-hmm. For McMikes. McMikes. And a McRib. McRibs. McRibs. But also yep. they needed vegetables. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yep. where did they go? Oh, well, they went got their um, cucumbers, tomatoes, some carrots, cherries, just a few blocks away, s- some grapes, a new leaf, new leaf produce, with Herman, mm-hmm. and new leaf produce market. Mm-hmm. And I found Herman, and he was in a bit of a state of disarray because one of his employees had just gone through a breakup. Needed some romantic. Do you remember this now? It's coming back. Yeah. Uh, yep. Needed some romantic help, and we knew the one person. The one in town. cackler that cackles more than all. We, we could hear her at the time. Yes, that's I right. I think she was in, in mission yeah, on the coast. Yeah, we, yeah, we could hear her. She was yeah. cackling away. Yep. And, and what you got to do is you got to go into the wind and go. Ah! <laughs> and she appears like Batman out of nowhere. Tara Holmes. Tara Holmes. From Holmes is where the heart is matchmaking showed up. Again, no. Um, well, she she actually knew exactly what was going on because she also gave advice, and the advice that she gave him was that his bed was terrible yeah. and that he needed to get a much more comfortable, better bed because you're not going to woo anybody with a lumpy mattress. All of these all mattress. of these partners were just so turned off with the mattresses of this employee at New Leaf, and the advice was simple: just go down the road, get a Sealy to nine forty eight Tronquille. And you'll, I think it's 948. You'll find Gord's Appliance and Mattress Center there, and you can get a king-size Sealy like I did. Well, remember, remember what she said was get two king-size beds, and you can have a bigger party. Absolutely. And you can't, <laughs> you can't make good love if you're, not, <laughs> if you're not eating right. <laughs> okay? You have to be... No, you have to be strong, right? Like, 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 carbs like George or, uh, Costanza and Seinfeld? You have to have a lot of carbs, right? You yeah. have to eat a lot of meat sometimes. I believe you have to eat meat to make good love, okay? I've always thought that. <laughs> always thought yes, that. Okay, yeah. And I know a place. We took a gondola way out to Turtle Valley. Mm-hmm. Where were we going? Maca Meats, where the animals are happy. Maca, Maca Ranch. Farm, ranch. Mm-hmm. Maca Ranch. Yeah. You can go online and actually order from them. Mm-hm. Uh, they got chickens that are... What are they free of? They're free of hormones, hormone injections, pesticides, pesticides, GMO. They don't do that. They're not yeah. caged? No. No. And to top it all off, we had such a great weekend, we went and watched a little bit of ice hockey. Camelos Blazers. Camelos Blazers. Mm-hmm. Wenatchee. We, we watched them beat the Wenatchee yeah, Wild. 4-1, I think it was. Mm. Yeah, yep, 4-1. Right. I just, that was probably our... Ridiculous display. We were so was tired. Was going on <laughs> it was there. a ridiculous display. Yeah. What a weekend, guys. I disagree. I don't think the song's racist. I've listened to the song. I think the song's just bad. And it took eight people to write it, which astonishes me. It's so bad. This is a DM <laughs> from, from you to her. Do you well, let me just... So she said, she said, she said I can't believe, w- you know, d- wouldn't Drake be the one to break it, not Ed Sheeran? And I just responded. You absolutely lost it. <laughs> Jason Aldean, Morgan Wallen, <laughs> all these idiots. They're, they're not real country music. And they should, they should be banned from calling themselves country music. They're not Hank Williams. They're, they're, they're not even Jason. Jason Isbell is fantastic. He's more, he's more Americana. He's more country. I'm more country than, than Jason Aldean. You, you he can't even write a song. You it's didn't even bad. let me get to the tweet okay, here. Okay? Sorry. You sorry. didn't even let me get to the it tweet. Gets you so pissed so off, So he man. gets accused. No, I have nothing against hip hop or rap. You do. What I do is I have, I, I have everything against Drake. He's, he's a fraud. He's not talented. I don't know why people think he's great. He can't sing. He sits there and talks. He, 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 all he is is, is a, he, he's a very good promoter of his own commodity, as I say, and he is, he's a front, front runner too. You, maybe you just can't relate to him. Oh, so you, you just like, he, was, he wasn't playing at the Highwaymen in 1989. <laughs> he can't be good. <laughs> have you read his lyrics? Drake is bad, and I don't like his music. <laughs> you would, you would and have that's, objective, that's an objective truth. You know? Well, we can have water every day. We get rid of that overpass. <laughs> you <laughs> just this fantastic. overpass. And, and also, we're looking for you don't uh, care about su- the safety support of the on the gondola idea yeah. from the North Shore. Oh, yeah. To, uh, Did you hear about this? <laughs> yes. Well, the gondola is a better it's, idea to come up from. First of all, it's from, not a gondola. It's a gondola you, from, uh, from, from gondola. Back yeah, it hasn't changed, has it? No. As one go, all go. So Drake, oh no, it's all about Drake. And he leaves the guy in the no, border. The guy's probably still in the ditch right now. The gonna, guy's he's probably still down there. He's probably homeless in Bellingham right shows. now. And Drake's going up there right what, now. What do you have to do to get stopped? Not, like, you're, on, you're, you're on the record then. Well, so who should pay for it? Uh, says but, Del Bass. But my, no? my, well, I think they should be, yes. There you go. It's on the record. True should pay for it, says Del Bass. 
My colleagues did not agree. <clears throat> yeah. And I want the damn overpass bill. Oops, I swore. I want the overpass bill. <clears throat> That's a terrible Rolling argument. Stones no, it isn't. The the no, no, because he's a team, team player. You wanted to stop the show. Yes. Oh, yep. 18,000. Meanwhile, he canceled the night before, but it canceled again because oh. my pal can't. Instead, he goes so, out of his oh, way. Oh, so his pal, his pal gets stuck at the border and he, and he leaves him there homeless. <laughs> yet, 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 a, 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 a video screen doesn't work and he can't do the show because it's, he, it's without the video, there's Drake no show. gets on the hotline bling. Who does he call? Travis Scott from Texas. He comes all the way to Vancouver probably for the over the guy at the border to please the, the people. Back to my original point. Yeah. He got a way bigger pop than Drake. Right. So so he so so he so he so he cancels the show because electronics don't work. Is he not a is he not a singer? But he he can't cancel the show. He wanted his to get the fans into a full order. experience, and we don't know exactly what happened. Is yet. there a, a guitar on stage with with Drake? No. Then I'm he's dead to me. Yeah. yeah. He's dead to Quite me. Quite frankly, I didn't like it either. <laughs> I just put down. Folds' favorite, because you, I texted you, I said, what are some of your favorite moments from the show? And you mentioned to me the KTW episode, the pickleball challenge, Carol Fenton. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The pickleball. Yeah, I, the pickleball challenge. I, I remember when Mike uh, Pistachio, uh, that North Shore Italian, no good uh, guy, he wrote a, a story about Reed, and Reed showed up at the pickleball challenge. And uh, I thought there was going to be sparks, but to Reed's credit, he just went up and shook his hand and said, "Hey, you know," and just chatted him out. You know, it wasn't a fight or. I think Reed was there to support, right. the, support the cause, as was Councilor Mike O'Reilly. Yeah, yeah. You, I remember that you're right though, because there was something a fairly big story that had come out. It was that maybe didn't shine all that brightly on Reed. I think it was investigation into into the into the, the investigation report into um, code of conduct. Um, alleged violations at that time. It was August, right? Yeah, it was in August. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you also mentioned the Carol Fenton interview. Yep. yep. Mark Madrigig was a big boost for our show. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot to Mark. And the UK, and this is kind of different. You mentioned the UK hitchhiker. Do you remember? The hitchhiker brought her dog here. Oh, yeah, I totally, that was, yes. It, that was, it yeah. stood out to me because it was so weird and different, and she was trying to um, give thanks to people in Kamloops who helped her because she, she, her, her car broke car down broke here. Down, yeah. She was basically just, just backpacking or just traveling across Canada by herself with the dog. It was kind of cool. And then I had heard about this, so I contacted her, and uh, she came on the show. we got a clip right here. I arrived in Vancouver and she was flying out. She spotted the camera. Look. Okay, <laughs> Getting the angle. Looking at herself. There. Um, yeah, so Jane was <laughs> arriving two days after me, so I needed a car. But I had what you guys call a lemon. <laughs> Someone said to me on the phone, Oh, so you bought a lemon? And I was like, No, I bought a car, not a fruit. That's a cultural thing. Yeah. Ended up in this little town called Kamloops. Um, and the next morning, I drove about a K down the road, and my dash just blew up. Yeah. But I went to a local garage, Briars Automotive, and she's not so comfy on that chair. <laughs> Good girl, stay there, sit down. Uh, they diagnosed the problem completely for free. They were absolutely awesome guys, managed to fit me in, everyone else was busy, and said, I'm really sorry, you're gonna have to go to Ford, they thought it was a sensor. Ford, this is Dearborn Ford, managed to squeeze me in as well that afternoon. Got a motel, was a bit, oh, this is a bit low on funds. I was looking at about 1,500 quid, which meant I'd be out completely, all my savings gone. Sorry, it's actually gonna be the steering column and it's gonna be a minimum of two and a half thousand dollars to fix. And I got a bit upset because I, I don't know how I'm gonna pay for it. Yeah. Um, and, and it was actually a ranch two hours north of here. Um, they said, you can come and Ford were gonna pay for me to, to have a driver, take me all the way out there. They gave me the number for this lady called Jill Watts, who lives about 25 minutes out of Kamloops, who answered the phone and went, yeah, I'm just at hot yoga, but I'll come pick you up after. And I skipped around Dearborn Ford. Everyone was cheering for me. I mean, um, I'm staying with this Jill uh, 25 minutes away, and she owns BC's Best Raw Dog Food. Wow. So we've been making dog treats, <laughs> which obviously she's been loving. Mm -hmm. And I've been helping her out on her small farm with some of her dogs. But she also is a lecturer at True mm, yes. for regenerative agriculture. And that's where it becomes really cool, because my best friends in New Zealand are leading with the regenerative agriculture wow. movement. So hopefully wow. we're going to be able to work together, get some of my friends teaching her students. Dearborn Ford, everyone should go and buy a Ford from them. I'm just a little English girl from out of town with my dog. And Kamloopians, I think it's what you call them. Kamloopsians, but yes, very good. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, no, they've yeah. just gone above and beyond. Because so, when it first happened, uh, I was gutted. But actually, I think my faith's been fully restored and more. The, the guest, yeah, she was great. Hmm. The dog was, I, at first I was like, it's not even moving. Yeah, <laughs> it was just staring at me. Yeah. Our apologies to Volkswagen, by the way. That was a lot of Dearborn Ford love. But yeah. uh, That was, that what, was what can you, before before oh. they came out. And then that's about, that was her experience. It could have been, been a VW that she was uh, driving to go get fixed. And they don't right? just sell VWs 
at VW, by the way. No, they, they sell other brands, yeah. but you can't remember no, or can't figure, figure out. That out. It's too no. much for you. Yeah. The low, low lease rates. Yes. Mm-hmm. How is it possible? Yeah. 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 That was kind of grassroots. I'm just going to listen <laughs> things off here. We don't need to play this KYSA clip, but I like that whole aspect of our show. Things like Ray Matanovich, NorCam Secondary, passed for the Cure, a lot of high school stuff we did. Mm-hmm. We rushed the court with the West Side Wonders when they won their BC title. Uh, basketball title. We did Fulton Cup stuff. We did South Cam girls field hockey, South Cam boys volleyball. The puppet girl, Jenna Kansky. Oh, from uh, Juniper Ridge Elementary. Oh, yeah, That's right. Puppet. Yes, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. great. Yeah. Just stuff like that. Um, Special Olympics coverage, Team Brown, Championship KYSA, and Soccer Quest teams. BC champions, the under 13 Kamloops Blaze, KYSA Blaze, Ella, Piper, Sophia, Naya. Just some trivia for the team. Of all the mums, Who's the loudest mom on the sidelines? Miranda. Mine. We have Miranda. Mine. What, what's, like, is it a scream? Is it shouting? Um, everything. Yeah. yeah everything. She's, like, she's, she's just the loudest. She's the most out there. But you put your hand up there, Sophia, didn't you? Her mom. Her mom, mom too. Yeah. yeah. That, that would be Mine's Diana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the cowbell. Yep. Diana has the cowbell. Yeah. Who scored the nicest goal this season? Ella. I would only say Ella is like when she ran it up by herself and then like yeah. shot it and landed on yeah, her face. Like, yeah. yeah, I didn't even see it myself. Yeah, my face it was, was in a the good, dirt. Yeah, was so we have video of that goal and I have to agree that was an amazing goal. Yeah. Also, the first penalty kick, I think it was you. Is the me? first, you, yeah. that was yeah. an absolute yeah. rocket. Yeah. It, was just, it was such a good goal in my ass. That was amazing. Yeah. Roughest player on the team, who's most likely to get a red or yellow card? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> How many did you I've, get this I've season? already got a yellow card, just one. You like just three. Yeah, probably three, but they don't call most of them. <laughs> is, it, is it the elbows or the slide tackles? Um, just, I'm probably a too aggressive jump. with my checks. Like, yeah. That's okay, though. Yeah. It's okay to get in there and mix it up a little yeah. bit sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Let's tee this up. It's KYSA against Soccer Quest, Crosstown Rivals, okay. Provincial Championship game in Kamloops, and it's tense isn't it? Yes. What, what was it like? Let's start with you, Naya. Just before the game, what was it feeling like? I was so nervous. I felt like I was going to throw up. Because <laughs> it was just <laughs> like, because we had lost against Soccer Quest and tied against Soccer Quest. So we had never actually won against this team in the season. Mm-hmm. So it was like we had to pull out the win. <laughs> Ella, this is your time here. This is your <laughs> moment, okay? You know if you score, that's yours. You're the mm-hmm. BC champions. And then when I saw like my dad and mom, like I wasn't crying before out of joy, but when I saw my parents, I like started crying. So in every photo, like you can see, like <laughs> I was like happy, but I was sobbing so much. <laughs> Oh, Ethan Katzberg. Yeah, yeah, that was, was pretty he inspirational. Was good. He, him, and, him and Dylan were good. Were good sorry, uh, sorry, Bill, did I almost hit you? <laughs> good sports guests. Also, the arts. We, 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 well, I like the fact that we, we, we covered the arts. Like last week or two weeks ago, we had um, we had the um, Camara Theatre people on to talk about their their uh, mystery Shakespeare play, which continues this weekend. William Shakespeare Mystery Box. Yeah. I, and I, was, I brought my car into Lantern Automotive. Um, and who was sitting there? But the guy we had on, the lead guy, who oh, yeah. was also getting his his uh, car fixed that day. So I saw mm. him again. Yeah. Oh, what was I going to say? Western Canada Theater. Oh yeah, my, my point it's later down the sh- show I was going to talk about is we were getting. It, it's disappointing and sad to end the show now because of all the steam that we were having. We were having people coming and asking about advertising on our show. I think Chimera Theater, and we were thinking about doing more arts and having a designated arts segment, mm-hmm. getting it sponsored maybe by Chim- Chimera Theater. So there's a lot that we're leaving on the table. That's why it's hard for me. Mm-hmm. We took, it's, all of us worked very hard to get here to this point where we're growing, we're in, we're in a state of growth, and now we're stopping, leaving lots on the table, including a lot of art stuff. Well, oh, I disagree there. I think it's a waste of money. But you want one up in, up in your neck of the woods? I want a gondola from <laughs> the bachelor, Mac Island. The bachelor dance. No, no, from Mac Island to, to True. And you could even stop along the way and have those as bus stops as someone had uh, replied to me on. It's not my that's, idea. That's someone else was on Twitter. Exactly. Oh, yeah, go to that. Pittsburgh. Go to go, oh, yeah, go, 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 go to LA. Go to LA. Level pegging. Uh, they're, they're, they're building one to SFU. 
that, that, oh, again, that's Vancouver. Like the pop, like you, this is not. What? It doesn't make any sense, folks. It's ma- going to be barely used. It's going to be you in there reading a book. That's it. Oh, oh yeah, millions okay, of dollars yeah. spent on yeah. you with and your you, coffee. And, and you're going to you put in that overpass, and you're going to see the kids are still going to walk underneath it, just like you that don't bike lane to nowhere going to Valley View. There's nothing going to be there. First of all, they're adults, and if the safety of the kids are so paramount, then True should pay for it and get out of my pocket. Your ages and again to all these ages, everything, everything that didn't happen in 1980 or. Before, oh, eighties was the best. The best. Okay, the best. The Reason best number forty-five. Why I left the newspaper. <laughs> the best decade. Nineteen eighty-six. Oh, Blue Belt. Yeah. Best movie of all time. Other notable stuff. I just and just pipe in when you want. Wolfpack Soccer Nationals was fun. The John Paddock interview. Oh yeah, yeah. The John Paddock you did with John Paddock during the during the uh, during the season with Bedard on the team. That was fun. That got national news because. Uh, has ownership ruled out a con Bedard trade? So I just heard today on Christmas thing, there's like 300 different languages of some song you sang, so do you speak some different language? What's that, sorry? Do you speak some different language? No, I speak English. It's been, it's been said what's done. Okay, so why, why have we been asked not to ask you? Because if you're working for the Blazers, I'm filing tampering charges. Okay? I don't work for the Blazers. Okay. But never before in the history of the league has there been a passport player. This started in June in this town. So, again, you must not be speaking English because instead what's, what's going to happen? You were just you were you were being very respectful, but you were asking you know serious questions about you know the once in a generational player and whether they're going to trade him, and, and he got a little bit a uh, little bit tense with you. But he to his credit he he sent you apology. Well, the, the WHL made him send sent you apology. me a, yeah. an official apology, which was yeah. interesting. I, I like your it. response saying you didn't need no need to. That's part of the gig, right? Yeah, yeah. Connor, we had Connor Bedard, um, mm-hmm. not here, but yeah. on our show interviewed him. Yeah. Uh, Tom Gillardi, Todd Stone, Peter Millibar, mm-hmm. Kelly Olenek, Vanny Sartini, Frank Caputo. That Italian uh, guy, is that Vanny? Vanny Sartini. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I, I really yeah. liked him too. He was one of my favorite guests by Must far. Must be Southern Italian. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he was so good. And I like the fact that he, he agreed with my regu- re- relegation argument. Oh, he yeah. He likes that. Yeah. Um, Rust Valley Restorers was big for us. Well, that was good. Um, Ryan so Burnham good. and many BC Lions, including yep. Rick Campbell. I do want to play this clip because you love the Lions. I do love the Lions. But I don't know if the Lions love you. Well, I think the Lions love me. I'm not sure if Rick Campbell loves me, but the Lions do. Funny thing about this is you love the Lions, and we had Rick Campbell in here, and you were just, oh, look at all my toys, my Lions toys. I don't think he really liked you. No, you R- know why he didn't Ricky like Campbell me. didn't like you. No, I think he didn't like either of us. Rex get injured, and then you don't have a third. Yeah. And it's, it's tough to go forward like that. The National Football League dresses two quarterbacks all the time. Yeah. I'm just telling you, every other football league, especially the NFL, they dress too. How far are we going? Going to get to the point where we'll have, you know, full-time, uh, full-time uh, coaches of the female persuasion like they have in the NBA and the MLB? Yeah. Well, we've got one. Yeah. We've already hired one. It's good that you got an education degree because it takes a lot more uh, finesse to figure out the ratios and having seven Canadians on the field at all times and all that. That, that would be a math degree. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but still, you know, you got to, you got to, you got. He's actually a good coach, and he's. Um, I mean, they just they just signed st- stand back, so they're gonna have a, uh, finally have a running game this year, which is great. And yeah. Brian Burnham was great because we had <laughs> we had Brian Burnham on I think twice. We had him on the show as a full interview once. Yeah, maybe then, I interviewed him at Lions Camp, and, and then well, we had him when we were talking. Maybe he was, was Zoom, and we were talking about the wire with him. Yeah, that was on Zoom. Yeah, that was Zoom, and um, yeah, he was a great one of the gr- great receivers of all time. We had Whitey Wednesdays too. We're, we're leaving that. Oh, on Sean table. White was great. Yeah, and my wife actually loved those. She thought he was great because he's got such a personality. And and I know that I Matt Baker from the Lions was on board for us doing that every week. Next, if we were to continue. Yeah, Matt Baker, good guy. We would have okay. Whitey Wednesdays every Wednesday. We could have monetized that too, mm-hmm. but we're not going to do that. Okay, we had you know Mark Madriga, Chief Kashmir, mm-hmm. uh, Shane Doan, Don Taylor. I'll play a clip right now. We don't need to play it here. Carol Fenton, and, and even the Svetic. Uh, I know your wife liked that interview with uh, Art Domenko, oh, uh, Ukrainian um, true athlete. Oh who, yeah, who that remember was... he 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 was here in Winnipeg and he went back to 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 play soccer, but then the war broke out and then he came back and then went again to he to was fight. Ukrainian Canadian, but he lived his whole life in Canada. Yeah, but he went back to fight. But he went back to play soccer though. Remember? Yeah, and then, and then, and then, then he, the season got the war got broke disrupted. Up, yeah, and he stayed there. The and building fought. across from him got um, hit with a missile. Yeah. If yeah. I remember, yeah. That was a quite, uh, quite, quite the interview. You should yeah. show, show a bit of that. I, I'll show a bit of that one yeah. um, a, a little bit later. I do want to play a bit of a Henry Small. I thought you might like the Henry Small one because he, he was one of our good guests too. And I got a Henry Small clip right here. This where he's from Mexico? This well, There's two interviews and I spliced them in together. Right. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's been uh, an interesting uh, ride. I mean, grief, grief seems to come in waves. 
you spend 25 years, 30 years with someone every morning. Yeah, it's it be it's a big part of my fabric of life, and um, it's, it's difficult. I mean, I loved him. Um, we had a real uh, chemistry together. We had a lot of fun. We went through divorces together. We went through sicknesses together. We went through, you know, we were a married couple, basically. Um, we argued and didn't have sex. So there you have it. <laughs> and were you able to, to talk with him during his sickness in that time? Uh, one of my regrets. Um, I would just say that I, I, I loved him, which I, I did say, and um, thanks for being part of my life for so long. He's lurking. He can hear his voice sometimes. Can he, can he speak right now? If, yeah. Henry, can you say something? I'm lurking. <laughs> yeah. okay. Disembodied voice of Henry Small. Ever been evicted from anywhere? Yeah, pretty much every place I've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> Give us one story. If you've ever been a musician, it's like, uh, and you haven't been because you're living in a million dollar home. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know? no, it's, it's, assessed, it's, it's assessed at that, but it's not worth that. He's loaded. No, I'm not loaded. I'm, I'm in journalism. His I'm wife's not, loaded. I'm not loaded. First, you need the wife, Henry. I think you have a few in the past, but you need, you need a wife. <laughs> Maybe go back and just recycle one of them. Yeah. I've had so many wives. I, I need I need help. Okay. That's well, you know, why. Tara, Tara Holmes, she's got a couple of weeks left in her business there. You should talk to Tara. Oh, you know her very well. She'll keep going. That's a yeah. boy. Yeah. Yeah. She's not going to stop the business. She's. <laughs> it's I, a thought, big boy. I thought you were going to say I need her as a wife, and I was about ready to, to <laughs> cut this interview short. Henry Small, Mike, I think he's a kind of buddy of yours too, right? Super good buddy. Uh, you know, we've done so much together. Uh, music in the Park is probably the biggest thing that we've done together. Um, you know, it's almost been 30 years of uh, 62 Nights Straight. That's his brainchild. He is uh, a fabric of, of Kamloops's, um musical community, and he's given his heart and soul to it. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's nice to have him on there. He's he's a great guy. So yeah, that was the kind of the lighter side of things with him. We also 2021. I mean, we we started in in some pretty serious times. We had the pandemic. We had the wildfires. I listed them all off here: natural disasters, heat waves, atmospheric rivers, flooding, probable graves at the Camel Indian Residential School, yeah. TRU Administrator Saga, the fatal Wolfpack accident. Uh, the Russia-Ukraine war. Your soccer season is pretty much, you know it's not going to happen, and you could come back to Canada, mm -hmm. but you didn't, so why not? So I, I did serve in the Canadian military reserves here as a combat engineer, and I also was born there, kind of grew up there, right? And I, I had family members overseas there, so I just didn't feel like it was the right choice for me to like just turn my back and leave and say, you know what, peace. Mm -hmm. So I just I just wanted to stand up for my country and ended up going through a bit of training and then off to the front lines I went. And what happened there? I mean, what was your experience like? I mean, uh, I, I don't really want to get into full details because it's uh, I, I don't think it would be appropriate for the cameras. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's stuff that you could never imagine yourself. If you've never seen it, you like it's hard to imagine what goes on there. If I knew what I was going to see and go through before I signed up. Maybe potentially I would have thought twice about going there. Mm. But you know what, I, I don't regret my decision. What's it like on campus right now with Russian students and Ukrainian students? Is there any, is there tension there? So when I first came back, I thought that that was, it would be an issue. But what I learned and what people that I've talked to that have been in that situation, they told me that not everybody is the same. People that moved here, you don't know the reasons why people moved here. Maybe people moved out of Russia because they don't want to be associated right. with that. And I've actually been in contact with somebody who's Russian who moved out of Russia for that specific reason. And I learned to judge the person by who they are rather than by just, oh, they're We're Russian, down, you know, I'm not going to be talking to you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to find a common ground of what to talk about with them. But I'm not necessarily going to go and hate you for that. Right. Because at the end of the day, you're a person. You're not like everybody else. Like, I'm not the same as 
all Ukrainians, right? Yeah, you never know who you're going to meet. That was like a last second thing where Cam Doherty from the Wolfpack said, hey, we've got this guy. And I didn't really know much about him. And he came on. He's just this you know, incredibly well-spoken guy with great insight on what was going on. Incredible experience too, yeah. He yeah. was good. That was a good, a good show for sure. Okay, let's kind of wrap it up here. I wanted to talk about some numbers and then we'll, which I'm sure everyone's excited about. But we <laughs> did a lot of cool things. May 2021 to December 2022, we had... 353,333 views across all platforms. We have since eclipsed the 1 million view mark across all platforms. Now, views aren't always seen as the greatest metric, um, but I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, we, we got hurt when our KTW Instagram and um, Facebook pages got killed by the meta ban. Bill C-18, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But we started our, our, F, our Facebook and Instagram pages. They're doing pretty well. YouTube is the coolest thing. I think we, we got to 552, I think, subscribers, 80,000 views. The last 90 days, um, we had 54% more views than the prior 90-day period. We had 987 hours of watch time. That's 9, 18% more than the previous 90 days. And we had 74 subscribers. That's 48% more than the previous 90 days. So we're, we're we're growing. You know, we are we are growing right now, but we're also dying. <laughs> <laughs> so that's about it. Um, I want to say thanks to Tim Schultz, Bob Duell, who was our owner, and he kind of bankrolled this show to start. Uh, Tim Schultz was the guy that I went to talk to about starting the show after I had talked to you and kind of convinced you, and Catherine helped convince you to get on board. That's uh, Tim Schultz, our former GM of the uh KTW, that's right. Yes, and then Tim recommended you as a guy that would be good to talk to, Mike. Yeah, you know, I had a, a meeting with Tim, and he said, look, I've got uh, this reporter, Marty. I don't want to lose him. Uh, I really want him to, to stick around, so I, I really hope that we can do this show because it's something that's near and dear to him. And I don't know if he said near and dear, but uh, it, that was something that was important to him because yeah. he wanted to keep you around. So I, I don't know if, if you knew that, but there yeah, you go. Yeah, I think you might have mentioned it to me. It was, it was a weird time in my life, 2021 gone through a breakup, dedicated myself to kind of doing something that I'd put on the back burner for a long time, weird midlife crisis, do it now or never kind of thing, all worked out. Um, Greg the Engineer, no longer with us, but Bennett as well. Well, he's still alive. Well, he's alive. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He's in Saskatchewan. He's in Saskatchewan, yeah. yeah. He's in Saskatchewan. He's hanging on by a thread in Saski. (laughs) Bennett, yeah. All the last week, uh, Bennett as well, Michael Potestio, Jessica Wallace, uh, Chandelier, Sean Brady, Dave the Hawk Eagles for all the photos, Alan Douglas for all the photos we used, Chris Wilson and Liz Spivey, they help on the advertising side, Jody Lawrence, Lee Malbuff. Oh, Lee Malbuff, yeah, yeah. Bad Beef with his uh, great art, uh, graphic artist. Logos, tree. yes. Uh, Caitlin Vanderwall mm-hmm. and Tim Petruck. Tim Petruck kind of in, was always encouraging me to do, to do this, and uh, so thanks to him. That's the outline. Final thoughts. It's been fun. Thanks. <laughs> well, fun. It's that's really fun. verbose. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. It's, it's been a blast. It was it was a good a weekly thing to do. Yeah, and um, it was it was it was good. It was a good ancillary thing to the newspaper. Um, it was fun. Yeah. Thank you, Bill, Mike, Folds. Thanks to all our sponsors. For Christopher Folds, for Magic Mike, for Bill, I'm Marty. We'll see you last week. Well, I hope we can do something again soon together. You know, it's uh, it's been it's been really great. Yeah, I, yeah who knows what'll happen, right? Yeah.